In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to set up a WordPress website using an SSL certificate from Let's Encrypt on a DigitalOcean server. If you are not familiar with DigitalOcean, you are truly missing out. Established in 2011 and quickly generating over a million users, DigitalOcean was soon known as one of the largest cloud hosting providers. In my opinion, the key factor to their success is their simple dashboard, robust set of features, and painless scalability. Let's get started. First, we need to log into a DigitalOcean account, or create a new account if you are new to DigitalOcean. If you do need to create a new account, we'd appreciate if you do so using our affiliate link below. This way, we both receive a small credit once you spend $25. I'm going to log in now. Once logged into your DigitalOcean account, we need to create a droplet. If this is your first time using DigitalOcean, you are probably asking, what's a droplet? A droplet is a terminology DigitalOcean uses that represents an individual server instant. It's pretty smart if you think about it, since a droplet is the smallest unit of measurement in the ocean, hence DigitalOcean. Okay, so to create a droplet, I'm going to click the Create Droplet button. Go figure. This will bring us to the Create Droplet Configuration page. One great feature that DigitalOcean offers is the one-click app installs. To access that, we're going to click on the tab that says one-click apps. And here you'll see a list of different softwares that we can select. And DigitalOcean will do all the heavy lifting and install all the dependencies. The one we're going to use is this WordPress 4.7 on 16.04, so that's saying that it's going to install WordPress 4.7 on the operating system, Ubuntu 16.04. And by doing this, we're not going to have to install PHP, MySQL, uh, Apache, or anything else that we would need to launch a full LAMP stack to launch a WordPress site. This is going to do a lot of the hard work for us, so we're going to select this. The next thing we want to do is select what size the droplet or server is going to be. Uh, typically starting out $10, $10 a month here, this is plenty of resources, and the best part about DigitalOcean is the ability to easily scale up to the next size if down the line this ends up not being enough resources. So starting out, the $10 here is fine. We're not going to worry about adding a volume, but if you had a site that had a lot of images, let's scroll up here, and this 30 gigabytes of disk space was not enough, you could always add a volume which is essentially just more hard drive space and move your media files onto the volume and uh, then update the path in the WordPress settings to say hey load the files from this volume but for the sake of this lesson this is slightly outside of the scope of what we're, we're doing here and that's not something we're going to go over. Okay next we're going to choose a data center. Uh, New York or San Francisco would be a good bet for me since I'm in the US. If one of these other data centers is a little closer to home, uh, you could choose that. In a later video, I'm going to show how to set up Cloudflare with your site. If you're unfamiliar with Cloudflare, it is a CDN and a firewall. So let's say someone was coming to my site from London and my servers in New York, for example, it would actually load a lot of those dependencies from a London base server. So don't get so hung up on the actual location. You do want something in your country if you can. Um, but you know, with CDNs, the way that they work, uh, we're going to be able to load faster load times using those CDN content delivery networks. Okay, so I'm going to roll with this New York. Uh, there's three locations in New York, so just any of these are fine. Um, and then going down, I'm not going to get into the private networking backups or any of this other stuff. Um, you know, you might even want to use a backup service through WordPress. There are some pretty good uh, cloud backups. Updraft Pro is pretty popular. Uh, something that's basically going to take your backups and store them off-site is usually even a better solution than having everything stored on your server. So if something catastrophic happens to your server, you have a backup off-site. Okay, so the only thing we're going to do here before we hit this create button is create a host name. So this host name is just an identifier. I like to use the domain name when I'm using this for a WordPress site, um, just because I only put one WordPress site per server. I don't, you know, you could put more, 
but I would recommend, you know, it's only 10 bucks a month. Do the one per server, it keeps it a little cleaner. It containerizes your WordPress site and there's actually multiple benefits of doing that. So we're gonna go ahead and for this example, I'm gonna use the domain sleepexam.org. It's just the domain I have lying around just for demonstration purposes, we're gonna use that. So I'm gonna call this host name sleepexam.org and hit create. Okay, so this whole process only takes about 30 seconds. You will receive an email that will have um, all the credentials for your server. So I'm gonna hop over to my email now. Okay, so let's take a look at what DigitalOcean sent us in our email. So we have the host name or droplet name, the IP address, which will actually match, if I go back to the DigitalOcean page, it matches the IP address here a uh, username which is root this will actually always be root this is the server username because we will need to log into the server and run just a couple command lines extremely basic stuff so if the command line seems really scary don't worry just follow along you'll be fine and then the temporary password this is something will actually prompt us to change the first time we log in so we're going to use um, a program called putty to log in it's my favorite SSH client. It's probably one of the most popular SSH clients. Um, so I'm gonna open up Putty here. If you don't have Putty, you've never used Putty before, just go down to the link and you can download Putty. It's a really light download. It doesn't even install to your computer. It'll just create a little icon, just double click it and it'll open this window here. And the only thing we need to enter uh, on this page before we hit the open button is the IP address. So let's take the IP address and it has to be the IP, it can't be the host name, even though it says host name or IP. Hit open. And the reason for that is because the host name has not been updated to point to the server yet. So that's gonna be the next step. So where it says login as, I'm gonna put root, and that's the same as the username right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and then hit enter. And then it's gonna ask for the root password. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this to the clipboard. And in Putty or most SSH clients, you will actually not see any text when you enter the password. So I'm gonna right click, which is the paste command on Putty. And you see nothing happened, but I promise you the password did get pasted there. I'm gonna hit enter and there we go. So this is saying, okay, I was logged in successfully. Now it's asking me to update that password. So it's saying, what is the current password? I'm gonna right click again, hit enter. And now it's saying enter a new password. So bear with me one second. I'm gonna go ahead and enter a password. And one more time, it's gonna have me re-enter that password. Perfect. So at this point, WordPress has been enabled. So what does that mean? Well, let's see, if I go to the, uh, if I copy this IP address, and go in my browser and paste it, you will actually see a WordPress installation wizard. So that means the server now is set up and it's just waiting for us to enter our uh, settings and configurations for the brand new WordPress site. Before we proceed with the wizard, we need to take a minute and point our domain at the droplets IP address. This will allow us to access the website through the URL and not through the IP address. To do this, we will log into where we purchased our domain, such as GoDaddy. In my instance, I'm gonna be using Namecheap. Locate the DNS management panel and make an edit to what's called the A record. That A record in short is where that domain should point to what IP address. So let me log in to my Namecheap account now. Now that I have logged into Namecheap and located the DNS panel for sleepexam.org, I'm ready to make my edits. The two edits I'm gonna be making are modifying a new A record, deleting this URL redirect record, and then updating the CNAME record to point to the right place. So let's get into this and I'll explain and break this down just a little bit better. So the first thing I wanna do is create a new A record by clicking add new record, and then select A record. Under the host, I'm gonna select the at symbol and under IP address, let me jump back to DigitalOcean, I will hover over the IP address and then click copy. 
then I will jump back to my DNS manager and paste that into the IP. I will then set the TTL, which stands for time to live, to five minutes. Essentially, the TTL says how long DNS records should be cached for individual services such as a browser or an ISP. I will then hit save changes and after those save I will delete this current record the URL redirect record. The next thing I want to do is update the CNAME record. This basically says hey if someone goes to www.sleepexam.org what do you want to happen? All you need to do in this record is type in sleepexam.org and then also change the TTL to five minutes and hit save. Essentially that just says hey if someone goes to the www version this this can actually take a little while to propagate. So let's jump over and type in the browser sleepexam.org. You will notice it's not working yet. Give this time. I'm gonna pause this video now check this every five to ten minutes typically it takes 20-30 minutes I have seen it done in as little as five and come back and uh, when this site is now loading properly. Um, this actually can take longer though, so if you don't see it work in 20 minutes, just give it some time. Um, it can take even up to a day sometimes um, to start propagating. So I'm gonna pause this video now and circle back when that site is live. Now that sleepexam.org is live, I'm going to finish the setup wizard. And there you have it. The WordPress has now been installed. Now if I visit sleepexam.org, you will see the default WordPress installation. But we still do not have an SSL certificate installed. You can see that by typing in https colon forward slash forward slash sleepexam.org. This brings me to an error page. Installing an SSL through Let's Encrypt and DigitalOcean could not be more simple. It's actually only one command, type in your email, and you're good to go. Let's go ahead and run through these steps now. Okay, so first I'm gonna reopen PuTTY, the program we used earlier when we had to... First off, I'm gonna reopen PuTTY, the program we used earlier to connect to the server, but this time, instead of using the IP address, I'm gonna use the host name or domain name, if you will, to connect. So I'm going to type in sleepexam.org and you might get that little pop-up to trust the um, certificate. Just go ahead and hit yes. I'm going to use root for the username and password is the password that I chose earlier. After I'm logged in, we're going to use the command let's encrypt space hyphen hyphen apache space hyphen d for domain space whatever your domain is so in this instance sleepexam.org I will hit enter now it wants us to use an email address this is the email that's used um, if basically any urgent notices or if the key is lost this is where they're going to send it so I'm just going to do info at sleepexam.org now it's going to ask you just to agree to the terms of service, so hit agree. Give it a second, it's thinking. Okay, so now it's going to ask, do you want this domain to work with, this? so the first option is easy, do you want this domain to work with HTTPS and non-HTTPS or do you want us to automatically redirect all traffic that's not HTTPS to the same URL using the HTTPS secure prefix. So I'm going to hit secure. This will say no. So if I go to a site that's not HTTPS, it'll automatically handle the redirect. It's much cleaner this way than having to do this uh, through an HT access or through a WordPress plugin or some other means. It just it makes it a little simpler and cleaner. So I'm going to hit OK. And then the very last thing is it's basically saying you should test your configuration. I'll hit OK. And now let's go ahead and load this page. 
And there you have it. Sleepexam.org is now a secure site. If I take out the HTTPS and I refresh, it automatically will add it back. So all the pages now that are loaded are fully secure. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something. I would appreciate any comments, any feedback, any questions you have below. And I look forward to making more videos for you in the future.